The morning is not something that happens. It's something you do. Your balls will literally get bigger if you follow this guide. Most people don't know this, but literally every single cell in your body has a little clock. And when these little clocks get out of sync, that's when you feel like shit. That's why when you go to a new time zone, you might have digestive issues, you might have brain fog, you might get sick more easily. Most people live their entire lives feeling like shit because they don't know the importance of syncing their clocks. And most people don't know that their skin is literally the biggest endocrine organ in the entire body. Literally getting sunlight on your skin increases your testosterone production and your dopamine levels. What does that mean? It means that not only become more manly in the sense that you have bigger balls, bigger shaft, more aggressive, more muscle, etc. You also have more dopamine, which means you're much better, much, much better at goal pursuit. So whether you're striving for success in like finance or women or sports or whatever it is, the dopamine goal pursuit angle is going to make you far more successful than anybody around you. That's because dopamine is not the molecule of pleasure. Dopamine is the molecule of drive, of forward motion. It's the molecule of satisfaction and happiness when you achieve the goal that you set out to. As important as increasing testosterone is increasing your baseline dopamine level because that alongside with testosterone is gonna take you to a whole different level. And if you're a woman, it's even more important for you because the sunlight is gonna help you regulate your sleep cycles and that's going to help you regulate your menstrual cycle. And that is the sacred source of your feminine power. Power. Very interesting then that the sun has been so demonized. They make you think that as soon as you step out in the sun, if you're not wearing sunglasses and like a pound of sunscreen, you'll immediately sprout tumors like freaking Deadpool. So you need to get outside first thing in the morning because what it's going to do is it's going to purge your brain of the sleep chemicals. And not only that, but it's also going to give you a cortisol spike. Bike. You might think that cortisol is a stress hormone and it's bad. That's not the case. There's no such thing as a bad hormone. It's more so that different hormones have different purposes. And sometimes because of the modern things that we do, these chemicals get out of sync. It's actually that cortisol spike which gets your internal clocks in sync. So I told you every single cell has its own clock. It's that cortisol spike that makes all the clocks synchronize and literally gets your body in order. And of course, if you do the opposite, if you don't get outside and get some sun early in the morning, your cortisol spike is still going to happen, but it's going to happen later in the day. And this is a bad thing because this is going to result in other mental problems. It's going to result in lower dopamine, depression. It's going to result in low testosterone. I want you to think of this very carefully. Why are doctors prescribing antidepressants before first prescribing sunlight, early morning sunlight as a first therapy, first line of defense against depression? Well, for one thing, sunlight is free. You can't make money off of it. So you might have the question, should you sun your balls? This has been a thing on social media. It's been like a meme almost, like sun your balls. To me, it doesn't make a lot of sense because the way the system works is your balls are the factory of sperm and testosterone, yes, but the on-off switch is actually a pituitary gland in your brain. And the way you stimulate it is actually getting sunlight on your eyeballs, especially morning sunlight is gonna turn on your pituitary gland. That's gonna signal your balls and your balls are gonna produce a testosterone. It's not like you can get more testosterone by just sunning your balls directly. That being said, maybe the science simply isn't there yet. Maybe in the next 20 years, we'll find out that actually sunning your balls does help. So you can try it, it's not gonna hurt you. Try it and tell me what happens. But as of right now, I think it's more of a meme than reality. Much more reasonable, productive, and beneficial is getting sunlight on your skin in general. And this becomes doubly important in the winter or cloudy days. And the science is very clear on this. This literally increases your testosterone. It's gonna increase your size of your balls, and it's gonna increase increase sex drive. This has been shown. There's no debate about it. So you might be asking, should I take a vitamin D supplement instead of getting sunlight? The answer is no. Sunlight is definitely the superior method. And on top of that, most supplements are a psyop. Most supplements have piss poor quality control and they aren't even absorbed by the body half the time. So I don't take supplements in pill form most of the time. There are some good ones, yes, but I don't usually consume a lot of like pill-based supplements. I will consume cod liver oil for vitamin D, especially in the cold winter months, or even if it's really cloudy or something like that. But even here, there's pitfalls. So most fish are polluted because the microplastics that we consume end up in the ocean and they poison the fish. And if we get cod liver oil from the fish, then that cod liver oil contains microplastics. However, there's some small good brands out there which are making quality stuff which are free of these toxins. I personally use a fermented cod liver oil plus butter oil blend. Very interesting product, worth checking out. I'll put the link in the description. But don't let that fool you. 
just because there are some good supplements out there, they're not better than the sun. You still need sunlight as much as you can get, especially when it gets cold and when it's cloudy. And now I'm gonna show you how to power up your sun exposure with something called double breathing. Now this is something you can do anytime. I want you to do this right now and tell me how it feels. What you do is you take your hands, place one on your belly and one on your chest. And you're gonna do a double breathe. So you're gonna take air into your belly and then your chest, and then you're gonna breathe it out. So it's like this. So notice what I did. I took uh, two breaths essentially. I took into my belly, into my chest, out. So it's one, two, three. Try this right now. Try this right now and tell me you don't feel better already. That's because breath is the interface between your subconscious and your conscious mind. Why is that? It's because there's many parts of your body that you have willful control over, like my hands. The only way I can control my hand is by actually thinking about it and moving it. There's also other parts of your body, like your digestive system, which you don't really think about. There's no way to control your digestive system by thinking about it. But the breath is interesting because most of the day, you're breathing without really thinking about it. It's, it's subconscious, but you can do it. You can think of your breath and breathe manually, right? So breath is interesting because it's both involuntary and voluntary. It's subconscious and it's conscious. So it's the bridge between the subconscious and conscious mind. So you can use the breath in a way as a communication device. You can use it to communicate with your subconscious and to tell it to de-stress and be in a rest and relaxed mode. And at the same time, you can even amp it up. So you can use something like Wim Hof method and boost up your body using the breath also. But that's not what I wanna do in the morning, though that's something worth trying as well. For me, what I want is extreme clarity and relaxation in the morning. That's what helps me be more productive. That being said, if you're gonna do exercise or sports early in the morning, perhaps you wanna actually get amped up and not relaxed. Maybe you wanna do the Wim Hof method rather than the breathing which I showed you. Really depends on what you're trying to achieve in the morning. If you're gonna exert yourself physically, Wim Hof method. If you are gonna exert yourself mentally, use the esoteric double breathing method. So you're doing this double breathing as you're gazing towards the sun. You're not looking literally at the sun, don't be dumb, right? So what you do is you gaze in the direction of the sun but not at the sun as you're taking these deep breaths and resetting your nervous system. Ideally, you're doing this bare feet on the grass. And think about it, when is the last time you stepped barefoot on the ground or barefoot on grass in general? It's kind of sad, isn't it? It's probably like since your childhood, you barely step on grass barefoot, barely step on sand barefoot, barely step on soil or actual forest floor barefoot. Do you even remember what it feels like to have anything but shoes on when you step outside? This is not normal. Your feet are actually very sensitive organs. We were evolved to collect valuable data about our surroundings from the base of our feet. So stepping out into the soil, stepping out into nature with your socks and shoes off is a great way to kickstart your nervous system in the morning. So the first thing you do after, of course, you go to the bathroom in the morning, first thing you do is getting the sun exposure, ideally standing on the grass and doing the double breathing. And then you tell me how you crush the day with just implementing this one practice. We spend way too much time indoors. Think about it. In ancient times, if you were the guy who's going outside and hunting and gathering, etc., and you know there's this one guy who just sits in the cave all day, you would think he's some kind of weirdo, right? There's a reason. If you have a pet, if you have a pet dog especially, you'll know this for a fact. In the morning, dogs seek out the sun. Animals instinctively know how to do this. It's just we humans who need to relearn these ancient practices. There's a reason why all ancient cultures worship the sun in one form or other. Think about what the sun is. The sun is literally a billion nuclear warheads going off every single second. By stepping out in the sun and getting recharged by the sun, you're literally running on nuclear fuel right now. Use that power and conquer the day. I'm going to give you the raw tier esoteric morning routine so that you can conquer the day. And I'm gonna make it simplified so that you aren't spending like half the day doing freaking morning routine and you don't actually get any work done. Only the essentials will survive in this gut. And what about sunscreen? Are sunscreens bad? Well, most of them are, most of them are toxic. Most of them contain endocrine disruptors, but not all of them are bad. So make sure you know what you're getting. So after you get your sun exposure, what do you do? You need to replenish your electrolytes. And I'll show you how to make the esoteric morning elixir. So should you have caffeine? Should you have coffee? Well, you can, but only after 90 minutes after waking up. Why? Because in the morning, your brain still has an accumulation of sleep chemicals in it, which is natural and it's fine. And your brain has processes to purge these. But if you drink caffeine, it disrupts those processes and you get a low energy crash later in the day. Cold showers, is that just a meme or does it work? It actually, actually does. So cold showers will boost your baseline dopamine for like six hours. Very, very beneficial to get a massive amount of work done. But you might be asking like, how do you actually do it? How do you actually get the cold shower done? This is what I do, it's work for me. You step into your shower and you take 
30 deep breaths. I'm not asking you to hyperventilate. I'm not asking you to do Wim Hof method. I'm just saying you take 30 deep breaths and you have a thing in your mind. You have a promise to yourself that at breath number 30, you're going to crank the valve. You're going to crank the thing and the shower head is going to pour water on you at that point. So I'll do my 30 breaths. I'll go as slow as possible because I don't want to get hit by the water. But at breath number 30, it's done. I crank the valve, the shower water hits me, and for maybe one or two seconds, it's uncomfortable. But after that, the endorphins kick in, the dopamine kicks in, and you actually feel really, really good. And here's the interesting thing. Cold showers actually warm you up. It's paradoxical. So your brain feels the cold and then freaks out and releases adrenaline and heats up your body, which is actually something which you really, really want early in the morning. That body temperature increase plus the cortisol spike is gonna sync your clocks perfectly and you're gonna have an amazing day. And in fact, you're gonna improve the quality of your life overall. After this, I'll use a neti pot, which is a nasal irrigation device. It passes water to one nostril and out the other and helps you essentially clear up your airways and have better breathing. I go more into depth in this in my breathing esoteric guide, so you can check that out if you need to. And then it's time to work. 90 minutes heavy work session. I will take the most difficult, challenging, dreaded job and smash it out in the first 90 minutes of the day because that's going to give you another increase in baseline dopamine and that's going to make you even more productive during the day. If instead you're doing these low level tasks which don't actually need any hardcore brain and focus, then you're kind of wasting the benefits of this ritual. So think about what you did. You had that cortisol spike, you had the dopamine spike, you had the testosterone boost, you have all these chemicals urging you to do the most difficult work. You should of course use these benefits fits to smash out the most difficult work. Why would you waste it on a low level task, right? So smash out the most challenging thing that you want to do that day. You've already won. If you literally do just that one heavy task every day, you're already a million leagues ahead of the average person. And then you have the rest of the day to conquer. Think about that. It gives you, it gives you such a massive advantage. Your head and shoulders above your average peers. This is the ultimate asymmetric advantage if you know how to use it right. So when should you sleep and when should you wake up? According to like the scientific principles and whatnot, 10 p.m. is the ideal time to sleep. But I've experimented personally, right? And this is going to be different for everybody because science works on averages. And for whatever reason, I don't get to sleep very well at 10 p.m. For me, midnight is the perfect time to sleep and I naturally wake up fully refreshed at 8 to 8.30 a.m. in the morning. So while science is an amazing baseline guide for understanding what is true, much more valuable for your health is actually personal experimentation. And then do you use an alarm? Well, I do not use an alarm. I wake up whenever my body is refreshed and ready to go. But I understand that you may have to use an alarm because you have school or work, in which case it is what it is. It's not ideal because sleep happens in cycles and the alarm might break the cycle at any point, right? So I don't use an alarm so that I wake up when my body is best suited to waking up. I will give you a powerful tool. It's called NSDR, non-sleep deep rest. That's like the modern scientific name, but the ancient name for it, because it is an ancient practice, 10,000 years old practice called Yoga Nidra. And it's kind of a guided meditation type thing. I have made one of my own, like I have made a guide for it. And I will link that in the description. What this does for you is as you're going about the day, you might feel tired, you might feel your dopamine levels coming down. That's normal, it's expected, especially afternoon, like 1 p.m., 2 p.m., you're gonna have a crash in energy. That's fine, that's normal. But in order to restore yourself, you can of course get a afternoon sleep, that's fine. But if you don't have the time for it, NSDR is the way to go. It takes about 15 minutes or less and it recharges your dopamine, recharges your energy levels, refreshes your nervous system, and you can conquer the rest of the day. So check that out. You can actually do that anytime. Whenever you're feeling a little bit drowsy, a little bit sleepy, NSDR is a tool for you. And for accountability, this is what you're gonna do. Tomorrow morning, you're gonna follow this morning routine. You're gonna do it correctly and smash out an important piece of work. You're gonna get your sun exposure and you're gonna come back to this video and type in all caps, praise the sun. I wanna know how many people actually took any action based on this video. And if you didn't do it, you gotta type, I am a cave dweller. Keep yourself accountable. None of this knowledge is useful unless you actually take action. Now I'm gonna guide you through a visualization that's gonna make it 110% more likely you actually follow through. You went to bed at 10 p.m. after a super productive day's work. You're getting so close to your financial goals, you basically have the money in the bank. You wake up feeling like this literal engine revving in your heart. You woke up even before the alarm rang. You powered your phone down yesterday night and it's gonna remain powered down until your entire morning routine is complete. You go to the bathroom, you stop at the kitchen to make your esoteric electrolyte drink, and you step outside 
into the crisp morning air. It might be a little cold, but the sun rays are warming your face. Your eyes are adjusting to the brightness and you take some nice deep breaths as you sip your electrolyte. You feel a sense of calm from the breathing but also a surge of energy from the electrolytes in the sunlight. You go back into your home, open up the windows, stretch out your muscles. Or if you're feeling really esoteric, you do your stretching routine under the sun. And then you get ready for your cold shower. Like every day, you feel a bit of hesitation, but you've been there before, and you know that the anticipation is the painful part. The shower itself is actually quite refreshing. After the cold shower, you feel your core temperature rising. You know the cortisol kick is happening right now in your body. It literally give you superpowers over the average cave dweller. And then you approach the first task of the day. You know you will emerge victorious, for in your mind, you have already triumphed. The morning is not something that happens to you. It's something that you do. Seize the day.